it is only one month. In the whole hot climate, if you're going on holidays or in the hot countries, it should be kept in a wet cloth or in a, there are special wallets you can get uh, to store the insulin, to preserve insulin. Injection technique. Now I will show you the step-by-step -step guide of injection technique. Can I just... So now I will talk about hypoglycemia. When do hypo occurs? Hypoglycemia occurs when the level of glucose in the blood is fall too low, usually under 4 millimoles. People with type, type 1 diabetes take insulin and can cause hypo. Causes of hypo is, is too much insulin delayed or missed meal or snack and not if uh, eaten enough carbohydrate, taken unplanned exercise or strenuous exercise than usual uh, or another cause is have been drinking alcohol without food and sometimes there is no obvious cause of hypo. Warning signs, signs of hypos. When a hypo occurs, the person of, of, uh, often experiences uh, why that occurs is the uh, body try to raise the blood glucose levels in as a, like a counter regulatory effect when you have when your blood glucose levels are low, that's why you are having those warning signs of hypo. These warning signs vary from person to person, including feeling shaky, sweaty tingling in the lips, going pale, heart pounding, confusion and irritability. Now treatment of hypo. How do we treat hypo? We did mention in the uh, previous slide as well with the, uh, with the glucose tablets or with the coca cola or with the juice and once your blood sugar, if your blood sugar level is low you do that and then make sure after that you have a long acting carbohydrate to keep the blood sugar level stable. If, if it's after you have treated the hypo, uh, if it's a meal time, have your meal. If it's not a meal time, have a apple or a banana or a two digestive biscuit so that your blood sugar level doesn't drop again. Being unconscious, if you have a severe hypo. So now I will talk about hypoglycemia. When do hypo occurs? Hypoglycemia occurs when the level of glucose in the blood is fall too low, usually under 4 millimoles. People with type, type 1 diabetes take insulin and can cause hypo. Causes of hypo is, is too much insulin, delayed or missed meal or snack and not if uh, eaten enough carbohydrate, taken uh, unplanned exercise or strenuous exercise than usual. Uh, or another cause is have been drinking alcohol without food and sometimes there is no obvious cause of hypo. Warning signs, signs of hypos. When a hypo occurs, the person of, of, uh, often experiences uh, why that occurs is the uh, body try to raise the blood glucose levels in as a, like a counter regulatory effect when you have when your blood glucose levels are low that's why you are having those warning signs of hypo these warning signs vary from person to person including feeling shaky sweaty tingling in the lips going pale heart pounding confusion and irritability now treatment of hypo how do we treat hypo? We did mention in the uh, previous slide as well with the, uh, with the glucose tablets or with the coca cola or with the juice and once your blood sugar, if your blood sugar level is low you do that and then make sure after that you have a long acting carbohydrate to keep the blood sugar level stable. If, if it's after you have treated the hypo, uh, if it's a meal time have your meal, if it's not a meal time have a apple or a banana or a two digestive biscuit so that your blood sugar level doesn't drop again. Okay. Step 1. Obtain insulin pen device from your safe place at room temperature. Remove cap of the pen. Open.
open the needle which is 4 millimeter needle then you 4 millimeter needle from BD microfine yeah that's it then you attach to the pen and it clicks and then you screw it on remove the white cap off and remove this small cap step 2 perform a 2 unit safety test which is to make sure whether your pen is working or not this test means by testing that for example if you accidentally drop the pen or you don't know if, if you are not performing the test whether pen is working or not or maybe the needle is blocked or maybe there is a air in the pen so this is a safety test so what you do from this dial you dial two units and first two units we are going to discard when you see the squirt of insulin coming through that means your pen is working once we done that and now you and the this pen this come back to zero now you dial your own dose for example you are only 10 units so now i will dial my own dose of insulin which is like 10 units so then you hold the pen with the four finger and a thumb like that so this is step three where you hold the pen like that and now for example this is like someone's leg or tummy so you hold the pen with the forefinger and a thumb on the top and then with the thumb you inject all the way down once you finish pressing it down then you count up to 10 seconds making sure all the insulin is gone through so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 and I remove and I make sure now this is come up back to zero that's his step four yeah if the dial is not returned to zero that means the injection was not given properly so it's best maybe when you are giving make sure it's come back to zero and once we done that you put this white cap on for the safer disposal of needle and you unscrew the needle and you put in your sharp pin do not try to put this small so uh, uh, cap you can hurt yourself or you can have uh, sharp injuries once you've done that you put the cap back and you can store it on a room temperature that's injection technique Problems with injections. So there can be few problems when you are injecting insulin. So one is a local reaction. If you really having any local reaction of insulin, we need to inform the manufacturers. Maybe it's a fault with the insulin or you might need to change that insulin to some other insulin. Second is I did mention in the, in the my injection technique that you must rotate injection site. Otherwise it can cause lipohypertrophy which is a forming a lump. Second is, third one is a painful injections. So if you are, your injections are painful, just make sure you are giving at, uh, making sure that you are giving at the right angle, which is 90 degree angle, not only angle or anything, and you are using the right needles. And uh, the another one is the leakage of insulin. Some patients complain that insulin leak, but make sure that you are giving ins when you are giving insulin, you are following the step by step guide of our injection technique. Means you counting up to 10, 10, 12 seconds, and then you are removing, giving enough times to have all the insulin in. Bruising and uh, bleeding. There are some common uh, injections that maybe you know you are uh, for the four, with the four millimeter needles. You don't need to pinch up, so just go straight in. Maybe it's the way it's your injection technique if someone is bruising or bleeding. The first, the last one is bubble in the insulin. If there is a bubble in the pan, make sure you are uh, priming your needles and uh, before you giving in insulin. My name is Michelle. I'm a dietitian. Um, I'm going to probably see you in clinic uh, when you come back. But uh, as you know, this is just a, a little bit more information for you to go home with. Right, so um, one of the most important things I wanted to get across uh, at first was the importance of um, always making sure that carbohydrate is part of your meals. 
because insulin works on carbohydrates. Now what are carbohydrates? A lot of people get this wrong and it's really important that we, you understand this. Um, first of all, carbohydrate is the only nutrient um, in our food that is broken down into glucose when it digests. Um, and it is also the only, therefore the only food that affects our blood glucose levels. Now there are two types of carbohydrates in our diet. One is starchy food, so that's all your rice, bread, potatoes, chapatis, breakfast cereals, rice. Um, and the other type is sugar, so all foods containing sugar. So things like biscuits, cakes, sugary drinks, sweets and chocolates. And also foods with natural sugars.